Hello, welcome to Kaijo Tutorials. Today we're going to continue the simple inventory tutorial series. Today what we're going to do is that we're going to create the API which will be used to manipulate the database. We'll be using Node.js, Express.js and SQLize to perform the role of the API. So SQLize will be used to map the, the tables within the SQL database so that we can perform create, retrieve, update and delete methods on the simple inventory system. Please join me as we continue the simple inventory system. Thank you. Okay, so let's continue. So what we're going to do first is create the main file which we'll call server.js. So you go to file, the new file, then once you save that file, you save it as a .js since Node.js is a JavaScript library. So server.js and save. Then what we're going to do first is that we're going to create a um, reference to a, part, a file. So this file we're going to call credentials. What this file is going to do is going to hold the connection string in one central file location so that if, for example, um, while developing the system, you have, um, you're using a local database and tomorrow you, start, you decide to host a database, you're able to actually reference from one central location. So again, new file and call this one credentials.js. So what we're going to do is create a module export. So we're going to have an object that's a frozen object. So it's a constant. And what we're going to have inside of this constant are the um, username, password, host name, and database name. So you're going to place the connection string for the database that you have created inside of here. Then we're going to reference the file. So we'll create an object called credentials. Then we need to have um, use a require field. Then we need to find the URL or location of that file. Next, we're going to install Express.js. Express.js is important um, in order for us to create the API. So here, um, the terminal is telling us that we need to update our um, npm installer. Oh, it failed. So the reason it had failed was because we require um, per admin credentials. So we would place sudo in front of the npm install dash g npm. So the dash g means global. So it applies this change to the entire the whole computer next we create a, a constant called express that will reference the express library next we're going to look look at um, adding two files two libraries 
these libraries has to do with encryption the first is bcrypt so it allows us to for example encrypt a password next we're going to um we're going to install crypto crypt crypto dash dash js which is another um encryption library you don't need both but it's it's your it's your choice because we'll mainly be using um but um be crypt So we're creating a reference to both of those libraries. Which is needed whenever you're referencing a library. Next, we're going to reference the Express library as app. So we're initializing Express.js. Next, we're going to decide what port. So we're setting what port it is. It can be almost any port. Um, generally, persons use 8080, but I'm using port 8080 for something else. So that's why I'm using 80.85. As long as the port is free, you can use it. Next, we're going to install SQLize, which is a very important library. So that is npm install SQLize. SQLize is what we'll use to manipulate um, the Manipulate the database models, create the ORMs, object relational models, and do the CRUDs, the create, retrieve, update, and delete methods for relational databases. So it's you can use this same library for more than just um, dealing with um, SQL, Microsoft SQL. You can use it for MySQL, Postgres, etc relational databases basically so what we're going to do now that we have installed the library and created the object to reference the library we are creating a connection string so i decided to call it database connection it can be anything then um, i'm initializing the sqlize method which takes a database name username as well as the um, password now we're adding the additional um, options which tells it what type of database it is what the host name is what the port is so the port that i'm giving um 1433 is a default port for the database as well as if we would like login to be enabled in the system and the timeout um the timeout time so how long will it stay active? So I'm setting it to be 30 seconds. Next, we're going to register the port that we had created earlier. So app.listen.port, so it means that they the application will be listening at port 8085. So we're just placing a message so that whenever we're running the API through the console, we are aware of what port is currently running through. Next, we're going to initialize the routes. So the routes are the endpoints in which the API will um, be accessed through. So first, let's try and test the API that is working. So you'd run node.servo.js. However, I did get a error because it requires tedious. However, here I spelled tedious incorrectly. So it really should be T-E D I O U S. So I need to install tedious. Now we now we can try to run the API, and as you see there, it is now running. So I'm going to use Postman. So Postman is used to test API connections. 
So I'm going to try to connect to the API. So we get an error here. The reason for this error is because we don't have an endpoint, we don't have an entry point, like a home page for the API. So that's what we're going to do now. So what we're going to do right now is actually create an endpoint. So it's going to be a test endpoint so that we know that it is working. So it's going to be a get um, route and we're just using the slash so this means that this is the default entry point and we're just going to return a message to signify that that we have reached the API successfully. So once we have saved that, we can stop running the API and rerun it. You can actually, you don't have to manually um, close it each time and um, re restart the API. You could use something called Nodeman, Nodemon, I believe, which what it does, it automatically updates, updates the API. In the next part of the series, we are going to create the other CRUDs for the other methods such as the location and brands. Please see the written tutorial, please like and subscribe and see you in the next episode.